Hi guys, how we all doing? And I uh, hope um, you're ready for the new month. Uh, I think we'll be in, it's gonna be August 1st in a few hours and I'm pretty, pretty excited about it. I'm excited about it because we've gone through January, February, March, April, May, June, July, as um, literally seven months of the year, over half of the year gone. And the question I have to ask myself is, I've gone through half of the year. Am I where I want to be um, at this stage in my life or am I still procrastinating? And if you notice, the title of this video is, I can't remember the title I put there. I think I put there, are you deceiving yourself or something like that? And you've got to be realistic with yourself. Um, and there are people who call me up and say, KJ, I really want to change my career. KJ, I really want to um, move up the career ladder. I want to... Um, get away from this dead-end job or I'm tired of being unemployed or I'm tired of doing this job that's not taking me anywhere. And then they have this long speech, this highly motivating speech that touches me, you know, or emotional speech that touches me and I tell them what they need to do and how they need to go about sorting their life out. And then three months later, they're calling me and they're saying, ah, KG, you know, I just read that success story, you know, I was so inspired by it. And I'm thinking to myself, if I had done this three months ago, my life would have changed. And I just, just nod my head and I'm thinking, I can't stand people like you, you know, you're just deceiving yourself, uh, people who procrastinate. And, and the truth of the matter is this, you need to understand the difference between cost and opportunity. Now, let me give you, let me, let me just show you something. Have a look at this. This is goat food, goat. Um, I am not a goat, but I eat like this every single day. I stopped eating meat. I think I said this a long time ago. I stopped eating meat. I don't eat after 6 p.m. And, um, um, and I try and exercise as much as I can. I live on fruits and vegetables. I, if I eat anything that has meat, it's, it's chicken, other man. It's chicken, you know, or fish. Why? Because I looked at the way I used to look in January. I looked at myself in general, I didn't like what I saw. I didn't like the fact that I had this big, massive belly. I didn't like the fact that, uh, that my face was all puffy and I, I didn't have energy. I, I realized that I was gonna look like those guys who kind of hit their late thirties and they look as if they're 60 years old. Why? Because obviously I'm not exercising enough and I had to make a decision. Um, are you going to continue the way you are and keep telling yourself you're gonna make change or are you going to do something about it? And I did. I made a decision and I changed my diet. And you've got to act. If you don't, it will cost you. Now, another thing that was worrying me was I realized that all these fruits and veg that I'm buying every single day, they're extremely expensive. If you actually decide to just live on fruit, fruits and vegetables and um, have a, uh, a meat-free diet and you're eating fish, it's actually very expensive. And I had to make a decision. If I, had, if I made a decision based on cost, the fact that it's costly, then it would cost me. Why would it cost me? Because, well, I have not made a change because it's costly. And as a result of not making that change, it's costing me my life. It's costing me my health. Think about that. So I had to make a decision based on opportunity. The opportunity that I could look good. The opportunity that I can feel healthy. The opportunity that I can be able to live much longer and have the right kind of energy to be able to keep working and working hard. That was what I was. I was making decisions based on opportunity. I wasn't making decisions based on cost because it will cost me. And that's the problem with a lot, a lot of us. Uh, people will say, oh, I don't have the time. Um, um, I just, I can't afford the time. Well, the question you're going to ask is, you can't afford the time to change your life? Think about it. How, how unwise is that? Oh, um, it's too expensive right now. I don't have the money. Well, you don't have the money to change your life but you have the money to pay, to keep paying for the things that are not adding value to your life. What's actually funny is you would find a lot of people, the things that have no value to them in any way they spend money on, but the things that will add value to them, they think twice about it before spending money on it. So you have the people who make decisions based on cost and they can, cost can only breed more cost. And you have people who make decisions based on opportunities and opportunities can only bring more opportunities. And that's the question. That's why I ask the question, who are you deceiving? You're not deceiving me. You're deceiving yourself. And the last thing you want to ever do in your life is to deceive yourself. Now, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because 
I have seen tons of people come on our platform, do extremely well, and secure jobs in a short space of time. There's a success story I recently read today. Well, I read today. And I don't subscribe to what this guy did. I refuse to subscribe to what he did. But he was proactive. Now, I'm going to find a way to show it to you and cover the name up. Okay, so just bear with me a second. I'll just open it up on Telegram because he said he doesn't want anyone to know about this. So let me just quickly show it to you. And I'll do it in a way whereby I can show it to you and cover his name up. Now, why am I quite... Um, hmm, how do I do this? How do I do this? Okay, I know what to do. I'm going to take this and put this here one second okay that's good so i'll cover it up from here then i can show it to you so bear with me a second i'll just prick this up and you can see it from here um oh, how would i do that um i have to turn it around don't i yeah okay so just one second one second guys one minute. i'll show this to you there we go so there we go so you can actually see this now so oh, 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 oh. there you go so here we go you can see He's saying that you guys at DBT are just too good. I don't, I didn't go for the first interview, but the recruiter begged me to just go for this one because it was very close to where I presently live. So I tried it out and answered the questions as detailed and as I learned so far in DBT. They were so impressed that they had to ask the recruiter to get my terms for coming onto the project as soon as possible. Um, uh, what else did he say? Um, well, I'm lost. You can probably read better than I can at this point because I'm trying to hold the camera and read as, uh, as that. I must thank God. I'm, I must thank God that I came to you guys at DBT. Thank you, KG. Now that I'm in, I want to stay in and be the best I can be. I want DBT to achieve this for me uh, because I know you can. Trusting God Almighty, we shall all succeed. Speak to you tomorrow. Good night. For now, this testimony is for your eyes only. I will give it in detail next month. Thank you, KG Giwa. Okay, so let me let me come back here so you can actually see me. And let's talk about this because you're probably sitting there and thinking, okay, great, he's gotten a job. Why are you angry about it? I'll tell you why I'm angry about it. I'm angry about it because I tell people when they come over here, do not apply for work for three months. Make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you've gotten your hands dirty. There's a time for everything under the sun. There's a time to eat and there's a time to drink. There's a time to learn and there's a time to apply what you've learned and there's a time to be paid for what you've learned. If you go from learning to getting paid for what you have learned without applying it, you will get fired. And if you get fired, God help you. It was my company name you were using. I mean, seriously, God help you. So what I always say to people is this. I won't even do your reference, so you couldn't even use my company name. And like this gentleman I'm over here, I told him, you've got a job, great. Thank God he didn't use my company name. He um, um, used the company he's currently working for. Um, and luckily for him, he actually has some relevant experience related to the new skills he was gaining with us. Uh, he just used most of what he learned from us to secure that job. And I always tell people this, yes, you can get a job. Just come on our platform, listen to the videos, call into all the meetings, you can get a job. There's no problem with that. Honestly, you can get a job. It's that easy. However, there's a difference between getting a job and keeping the job. You don't want to be that dude who takes a leap, breaks his leg, and other people who are taking small but secure steps surpass you. You want to be that guy that takes small but secure steps so that when the time comes for you to excel, you are not trying to figure out how to excel because it's already inbuilt inside of you. So what you do need to do, what I, I mean, I, I'm happy for him. He's gotten a job. Great. But I do not subscribe to that. And why am I, don't I subscribe to it? Because he got a job within a week. One week. Came on the platform, listened to the videos, and he applied for work. Great. But... That is not what I subscribe to. What I subscribe to is you come on the platform, you get your hands dirty, you learn, apply what you've learned, make mistakes, become an expert in it, then apply for work, use our company name, we'll provide you with a reference. Why? Because we can vouch for you. And that is the recommendation, that I rec I, that's what I recommend to everybody. So you, in reality, in, li in life, you've got to stop deceiving yourself. You know, you're not hurting, you, you think, you, the problem with a lot of us is that we lack patience. And what you do in a hurry will fall apart in a hurry. What you take your time to do is built on a solid foundation. 
And as a result of that, the rain can come, the storm can come, and it will always stand. So do me a favor and allow time, seed time, harvest time. You don't plant a mango and expect that mango, a mango seed and expect that mango seed to become a tree tomorrow. You have to water it. You have to tend. You have to tend to the tend, center the garden. You have to make sure that you are continuously looking after that mango tree until it becomes fruitful. And I, I hope this makes sense to you. I, I really hope it does. So my recommendation to everybody is very very simple. One, stop procrastinating. Stop telling yourself I'll change my career tomorrow. It doesn't make any sense. Why? Because when tomorrow comes. Your career hasn't changed one, and the external and ex it's external and internal factors today are different from the external and external factors tomorrow. And you might find that you don't have the time to do what you had an opportunity to do today. So right now is where you need to make that decision. Seven months into the year, if you're still where you used to be, and or if you're not happy about where you are. Seven months into the year, it's your fault. Case closed. Because every decision you make every day determines where you are tomorrow. How you think, who you hang around with, what you listen to, what you take in in terms of what you're reading, even what you eat determines where you are and what you look like and what your net worth is tomorrow. So I always tell people, establish the value of the net worth of the people around you. Look at the people around you. Look, I, I used to have friends that every single time all they wanted to do was just drink, 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 go out, chase this girl, chase that girl. You know, and we're all young. We, we, it was, it's, it's fun. But the question I have to ask myself is, what value is this adding to me? What is the net worth of these friends I have around me? You have to establish the net worth of your friends. And then I started to separate myself from them. I realized that actually if I hang around people who are where I want to be, and if you notice, I always say this, a foot, when, a foot, when a footman starts running with horsemen, he hasn't got a choice than to get a horse. Yeah? When footmen hang around with footmen, there is no need to get a horse. So you've got to hang around people you aspire to be, be like. For mentors, people who can add value to your life. Sorry, God came in. And more importantly, you've got to establish the net worth of those people. So... I am in a position now where we've just launched a, a DigiHub in Lagos. Um, I'm really excited about it. It can take 200 people and we're going to use it to add value to a lot of people in that country. And we're planning to expand all over Africa. I couldn't do that by myself. I was able to do that because of the network of people I have around me. Um, I'm, one of the, my greatest pride is the launch of the First Bank online portal, the new First Bank website. I can comfortably say that I did that along with our team our company did that i feel proud of it but you know what if i didn't have the right network around me that would never have been possible so you gotta sit down and be realistic with yourself you gotta tell yourself right now be just be honest with yourself um these days i watch netflix a lot and i've been worried getting very worried i've been thinking to myself netflix is spending a lot of money to use artificial intelligence and machine learning to understand what I'm interested in, that the moment a series finishes, they're putting the next series on. And I find myself spending most of my life on Netflix. And I started to get worried. Why? Because I'm thinking, what else could I be doing with that time? I am making Netflix richer because they keep collecting my $8.99 every single month. And they collect that from millions of other people by buying my, basically owning my time. And the question is, who's getting the attention of your time? And that's so important. And that's one of the things I just stopped for a second. I said, hold up a second. I must bind the spirit of Netflix. I must cast the demon of Netflix out of my system. Why? Because I thought about it. Uh, let me be honest with you. Yesterday was Sunday. I did absolutely nothing. And what was I doing? I was watching Netflix all the way from 9 a.m. in the morning. I actually didn't go to church and I feel bad about it. Um, and I was watching Netflix all the way from 9 a.m. to morning to 2 a.m. in the morning. Do you know what I could have done with that time? If I went to church and praised God, maybe I'll have heard something from God. If I spent time with family and friends, you know, maybe I would have, maybe I would have, maybe, maybe I would have built a more meaningful relationship. If I called my investors just to find out how they're doing, maybe they will appreciate me more. But instead, I was wasting my time watching Netflix. I was making Netflix reach out by giving them my time. Who are you giving your time to? Think about it. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, no more Netflix. Actually, I, 
I know I can't stop it 100%, but I have to choose a time that I watch it. And this is the only amount of time I'm willing to give Netflix. And that's the same thing you've got to tell yourself as well. You've got to do the same thing. It's, 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 because look, the only thing I always tell people, the most valuable commodity in life is not money. People say, oh, I want money. If only God can give me money. If God can give me one million pounds. Are you joking? Look, let me ask you a question. If somebody gave you one trillion pounds right now and you only have and and, and for that one trillion pounds you um they, you, you only have they will give you um you will only have five minutes of your life left so i'll give you five trillion pounds but you only have five minutes of your life left or i give you nothing and you live up to 90. which one would you take I mean, do me a favor, just tr comment right now let me see what you would take honestly would you take the one trillion for five minutes lifetime or would you take nothing for the ability to live up to 100 years of age now i actually believe that most people would take the um uh, would not take the money why because life is far more valuable and that life is time that's the truth of the matter time is the most valuable commodity out there and that time you're gonna okay one second okay someone said <laughs> so yeah nothing not, not not yeah yeah nothing beats yeah yeah exactly one trillion for five minutes and then you're dead what am i gonna do with one trillion so you realize that the money means absolutely nothing absolutely nothing what matters is time because with time who knows you know, at, at the end of the day really and truly maybe all you need in your lifetime some people don't want to be rich they just want to be comfortable and maybe five hundred thousand pounds for the rest of their life is enough for them to be comfortable so what do they want one trillion for so the value is not in the money the value is in the time so the question is what are you investing your time in and that is why i tell people that when you come on our platform invest three months minimum why do you need to invest three months minimum because that time you're exchanging that time for knowledge you're exchanging that time for wisdom. Wisdom is knowing what to do when others don't know what to do. And how do you become wise? By making mistakes and learning from that. There are two kinds of wisdom. There's the wisdom of insights, where you know things that other people don't know in the future. And there's the wisdom of experience, where you learn either from your own experience or from other people's experience. My prayer is that you learn from both. But the ex learning from your experience should add value and not take away from you. While learning from other people's experience should avoid things being taken away from you. So what do I mean by that? On our platform, you have the opportunity to learn on learn based on live projects we're working on. We will make mistakes. You will learn from those mistakes. You will, you will make mistakes in the safety of the eWork Experience platform so you don't get fired. Because obviously you can make as many mistakes here as possible and nobody will fire you. Okay, if you make a mistake in a job that pays you 500 pounds a day, they may fire you and you have lost. So you don't want to gain experience that way. You want to gain experience in the uh, comfort, in the, in, the, in the ecosystem of comfort, you know, in the ecosystem of safety. So you're in exchanging your time for knowledge, understanding and wisdom, which above all, you must value more than silver and gold. Why? Because... Three months later, you can apply for work, secure a job you initially wouldn't have been able to get three months before, and start to build on your career from there. And you continue to stay on the platform. People have been on the platform for seven, eight years. Why? Because they have understood the value of the platform. So, in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say to you is this. And if you notice, I keep, I've talked about two things. What are you doing with your time? Make decisions based on opportunities not cost because if you make decisions based on cost it will continue to cost you cost can only breed more cost opportunities breed more opportunities take small but secure steps don't be in a hurry to get a job sorry sorry that don't be like those guys that are looking for any which way possible you know they pray to god to help them then they try to help god no 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 no. if god is going to perform a miracle in your life allow him to perform that miracle so that you know there was nothing you could have that there was nothing you could have done to make it work so it's so important right now that, and, and, and the, the mandate I told everybody for the month of um, August is let go and let God. Now, why am I saying this? I want everybody, I want everybody, especially those who are on our platform, just focus on doing what you are supposed to do. Faith without works is dead. Your faith brought you to our platform. Now you must do the work. The work of gaining practical work experience. The work of gaining expertise that companies are willing to pay for. Now, 
Don't worry about the fact that, oh, KG, but when I apply for work, they're asking for five years' experience. Uh, we're only having three months' experience. All the people that have been getting jobs on our platform, is it not three months they are using to get a job? The question is, there is what we do and there is what God does. We, we never take God out of the equation in this business. Okay? And a lot of people have told me that, KG, you need to separate God from, from, from business. I said, you go and separate God from your business. I refuse to do that. Because if you look at it, 30 people getting a job every single month. Go and find me a company in the United Kingdom. Well, I don't know about the world, but go and find me a company in the United Kingdom that helps 30 people get a job every single month. Go. You will not find one. Why? Because this can only be a miracle. But you must do the work. So you come here and do the work. Gain the experience. Let God do the rest. You just take your time and read our success story. Read the people that have gotten jobs and read the way that God literally made things happen. I mean, it's unbelievable. You just have to read it to understand. To, to, to and I always say you have to experience it to understand it. So this month, it's all about let go. Let go. Don't, oh, um, I, um, um, there are more experienced people than me out there. Let go. Oh, I only have three months on this platform. Let go. Oh, um, I'm a slow learner. Let go. Sorry, guys. Calls keep coming in. Apologize for that. So, oh, um, I mean, what are the different kinds of excuses that people give me? Oh, my, con I don't have enough confidence. Let go. Sorry, guys. Someone is really desperate to get through to me. So he keeps calling nonstop. Okay, sorry. I've actually had to pick up the call and tell the guy that I'll call him back. Okay? So... Let go and let God. And also, guys, if you're trying to call me, bear in mind that I'm actually using the same phone that you are calling. So you would your experience will be disrupted. So please be patient. Let me finish this. You can call me after. All right. So uh, back to what I was saying, let go and let God. You focus on gaining the experience. Let God perform the miracle. That is our focus for the month of August. Uh, I want to, I, 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 I've got to be honest to you. I, I think I said this last week. Yeah, I did a video last week and I said it. This month was probably, probably supposed to be the most disastrous month for me. Why? Because I stopped advertising on Facebook. I use Facebook for all of our advertising because obviously billions of users on Facebook, uh, it's a mo they, they have a lovely mobile fair strategy and they've taken over the rev mobile revenue. When it comes to generating revenue via mobile, the mobile market belongs to them. Why? Because everyone's on their mobile phone. And um, But the problem is Facebook is overcharging. If you go just Google right now, their, their sales this month has been ridiculous. This quarter, quarter two, their sales has been ridiculous. They've made so much profit, it's, it's unbelievable. Why? Because they're making money from people like me. They're making money from all the people that are relying on Facebook. And I just realized that, you know what? I can't be spending 20 to 30,000 pounds every single month on Facebook. Now think about how much I'm spending on Facebook and think about how much other massive companies are spending on Facebook. That's why they, 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 they could roll out a 9.2 billion um, uh, revenue this this, um, this this quarter and I felt you know what I'm gonna cut down my advertising I'm not gonna spend on Facebook I'm gonna cut my advertising down and I'm just gonna forget about it totally that's what I told myself no more hey Lord have mercy the thing my eyes see eh? like we used to make like two three thousand pounds sometimes four thousand pounds a day my friend that money dropped to like 500 maximum 1,000 a day my eyes open and I realized that, oh my God. So, <laughs> we're actually making money from Facebook like mad. As you mean, Facebook is actually making us money. But the problem is that I'm spending a lot on advertising. I need to reduce it. So, I still, the stubborn me decided that, you know what? Let me find a better way. I mean, for crying out loud, bears of the same feather flock together. And um, uh, a better hand is better than 10,000 in the forest. So, let me focus. Okay, sorry. People are calling. I apologize. So I said, let me focus solely on my customers. So I refused to put the ads on. And then we realized that the sales were dropping, sales were dropping, sales were dropping. And there's a certain amount I need to pay at the end of every single month. Now, thank God for cash flow. We have cash, a lot of cash flow. So we're able to pay people. But at the same time, we don't want to end up with a bad month. It doesn't look good in business. It also doesn't look good in your account. And they always ask you, why did you have this bad month? And the last thing I want to be able to say is, oh, by the way, I decided to stop the advertise, uh, adverts. Oh, why did you stop the adverts? Um, I have no justifiable reason. <laughs> so that doesn't make sense. I was trying to drop costs. Well, you drop costs, but what happened? You dropped your profit. Okay, not great. So one of the things, by set week two, I realized that actually I think we're in trouble now. We need to find an ingenious way of doing things. But also I had to tell myself, 
I cannot, I cannot continue to spend this amount of money. So I've got to think smart. I can work hard, but I've got to think smart. I have a choice. Do I work hard or work smart? Uh, well, why don't I just do the both? Why don't I work smart and work hard? So we decided that, okay, maybe we shouldn't stop all the ad adverts. Maybe we should cut the advertising into half. So half the advertising spend. But then now start to refine the sales pipeline. You know, and, and start using technology to find a better way to increase our conversion rate. Look at other opportunities available for you to upsell, to cross sell, to next sell. And then look at the, um, uh, the, um, look at the value of your customer base and how much more revenue you can generate from your existing customer base. Look within, you know. So a better hand is better than 10,000 in the forest. Before you start spending money to get more customers, how about you look at your existing customers and figure out how to get more out of them by adding more value to them. And then, based on the same federal flock together, if your customers are happy, then they will bring more customers on board. And you can go to the other end of the revenue model uh, where you have customer referral as a result of customer advocacy. All right? When you come on board, you learn all these things. And we decided to do that. Now, as we did that, obviously, I committed my plans onto God. and I said, Lord, please direct me. You know, this is what I want to do. I think it's a right decision, but you know what? At the end of the day, I've got to I've got to commit all these things into your hands. Only you can make it right. So I and I, I, what I always do is whenever I commit something to God, I before I go to bed, I'll pray. I'll say, Lord, please visit me today. Show me what I need to do. And it's amazing. It's, it, it never fails me. And I went to bed and I had a dream of a really clear strategy of what I needed to do, how I needed to do it. I woke up, I wrote all those things down, and I implemented it. And I can comfortably tell you that this month has been the most amazing month ever. Why? Because we've surpassed our sales since January. Like January, February, March, April, May, we surpassed our sales. Um, and I dropped the advertising revenue, so we're making more profit. So I'm like sitting down, I'm all chilled, I'm all happy. But guess what? I had to let go and let God. Yes, make plans. Don't be that lazy dude who is sitting down in church every day asking God for miracles, but yet he is not doing anything about it. And those are the kind of people that irritate me. You know, they will sit down and will spend three hours praying, but they're not doing anything about their life. Faith without works is dead. You must do the work. Then connect your faith. Yeah. So I came up with a strategy. I presented that strategy unto God. I asked him to direct me. I had a lovely dream or vision or whatever you want to call it. I mapped it out and it was a completely successful month. So I did everything I could do. And then I let go and let God and he directed me. So my advice to every single person here who is listening to this video. And if there's anything that you have learned and that you're going to take into the next five months of 2018 is faith without works is dead. Do the work. Do what you have to do before you do what you want to do. Because if you do what you have to do, you will always have time to do what you want to do. Then, above everything, commit it all into God's hands. Don't procrastinate. Value your time. Understand that time is the most valuable commodity. And decide exactly who you hang around with, who you talk to, who you're listening to. Another uh, very important advice I always tell people. Before you take advice from somebody... Make sure they qualify to advise you. It's very important. For example, someone called me the other day and said, um, I, de I decided not to come on your platform because someone advised me that if you come on that platform, it's really, really hard, you know, and um, they leave you to your devices. Nobody helps you and you don't get a job and I don't give references and uh, that I'm really, I'm a really mean person. That was what they told him months ago. He now called me recently and said, KG, I wish I hadn't listened to the person who advised me because I just spoke to my friend right now. He just finished your program. He's just gotten a job. He's on 450 a day. And what he said was completely opposite to what uh, I was told. And I told him, I said, sir, I want to be honest with you. Everything that guy told you the first time is true. And everything this guy who has gotten a job told you as well is true. The question is, you took advice from somebody who wasn't qualified to advise you. For example, about the fact that we don't help you, he's absolutely correct. And I'm going to let you know right now, we believe that you are not a child. We should not be spoon feeding you. I'm, I'm very straightforward in that respect. When you come on this platform, nobody's going to wake you up to attend project meetings. 
Nobody's going to tell you that you have to listen to these videos. We've told you that this is what you need to do. You have to be proactive to do it. We've created a platform. If you don't attend meetings, that's your problem, not ours. If you don't um, listen to the videos we've given to you to listen to, that's your problem, not ours. If you don't get a mentor as and you don't qualify for mentoring, that's your problem, that's not ours. If you blab your way into a job interview and you get the job and you contact me to do a reference for you and I check your activity on Basecamp and there's nothing there, I will not do your reference. So the, the guy is absolutely correct. Because we don't do things like this. We're very straight over here. Very, very straight. So, he now spoke to the other guy who said, look, career insights is not for the lazy people. If you are focused, dedicated, and willing to sacrifice the time required, it will work for you. This is what I did. This is how I did it. And this is where I am now. So, you've got to ask yourself, who am I taking advice from? Is the person advising me qualified to advise me? Look at the life of the person that's advising you and what they are advising you about. Is it actually showing in their life? If it is not, then you're taking advice from the wrong person. Just like I said to you earlier, establish the net worth of your network. Look at the people around you and what is their net worth. And net worth is not only to do with money. Net worth can be to do with, with knowledge. Net worth can be to do with principles. It can be do, to do with values. It can have anything to do with so many things. So I have a friend who's a health freak. That person's net worth to me is a lifetime of good health. So I always maintain a relationship with them because they always have something to tell me about what I should eat, what I shouldn't eat. I have somebody who is like this guy is like the closest, like this guy is all for everything about him is all about God, 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 God. He's the most boring person on, in, 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 on, on earth, in my opinion, because all he wants to do is fast and pray and spend time with God. He doesn't want to do anything else. And I like him. I like to associate myself with him. Why? Because iron sharpens iron. He rubs off me. But he's a boring guy. But I understand his net worth. He may be my ticket into heaven as long as I continue to have anger around with him. Now, that will not make sense to some people. It makes sense to me. And then I have people who are connected to wealthy people. People who are connected to people who can basically have influencers who can influence the people who can influence other people. I connect myself to them to increase my influence, to increase my ability to be able to reach more people and do more things. So... You've got to look at your network and say to yourself, who are the kind of people you have around you? And then how are you adding value to those people? Because the only way they can continue to stay connected to you is because they're getting something from you as well. And I hope that everything I've said in some way has opened your eyes into where you should be. Because five months will go like this. When did January 2017 um, uh, uh, start? Was it not like yesterday? Now, seven months into the year, we only have five months left. Think about it. Only five months left. Are you where you want to be? Are you going to be making the same decisions that got you to where you are that you're not happy about? Or are you going to make a difference? You know, these are the kind of things we've got to think about. So the title of this video is Stop Deceiving Yourself. Or Are You Deceiving Yourself? I can't remember what one it is. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to tell you. you got to be honest with yourself. You know, sometimes the only person that can tell you the truth is the person that's looking back in the mirror. You've got to do that. You've got to tell yourself that, come on, I've got to be realistic with myself right now. Are things working out? If they're not, then you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and get the same result. If you keep doing that, it's called madness. And you're not mad. Me and you know that you're not mad. So why are you repeating the same problem, the same thing over and over again? Um, I I'm very sorry if the way I've said this has offended some people. I'm very, I'm, I shoot straight. I say things as they are. You know, and um, those who are able to get what they can get from it, get what they can get from it. Uh, and I really hope that you've learned something from this. Uh, but I want to be as realistic as possible and I want to be as factual as possible. You've got five months left. If you end up where you are now in five months, it's your fault. Nobody else's. Same thing with me. If... I continue to eat unhealthy, telling myself I will change, but I continue to eat unhealthy. It's my fault if I catch diabetes. It's my fault if I get cancer. It's my fault if something bad happens to me or I don't have the energy to continue to do the kind of things I want to do. 
So instead of me procrastinating, I'm going to do something about it. Same thing with this month. This month could have been the most dis disastrous month for me. The most. But I sat down, took responsibility for my own action. I'm the one that cut the advertising cost. So now that I've cut the advertising cost, find a solution. I found a solution, committed it to God, and then guess what? Amazing. Now I don't need to spend that much money on Facebook. I have a choice. I could have, and this is very important, take note of this. I could have, as a result of fear, realizing that my sales is dropping, continue to spend how much I spend on Facebook and never ever realize the opportunity. Why? Because I was afraid I would cost me my profit. But instead, I grabbed onto the opportunity that if I can drive down my advertising costs and increase my conversion rates, that could be an opportunity that puts me in a position where I am generating more revenue at a lower cost of advertising. So I had a choice to make a decision based on cost or make a decision based on opportunity. And I took the opportunity because if I made a decision based on cost, it will continue to cost me. Same thing with you right now. Are you making decisions for the next five months based on cost or are you making it based on opportunity? You make it based on cost, it will continue to cost you. You make it based on opportunity, you create more opportunities. There's a time for everything under the sun. A time to learn, a time to have applied learning and a time to gain experience and a time to be paid for that experience. Time and chance happens to us all. The most important thing here is when your time comes, make sure you are opportuned and ready enough to grab on to what is in front of you. And I hope that you're all blessed. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys on Saturday. Saturday is when the training starts uh, at the London office. And um, I look forward to seeing you. And I look forward to continuing, continually celebrate your success stories by God's grace. Take care. Bye-bye. And uh, stay blessed.